Thanks for having us. Thank nice. you for coming. Really good to see you. It's good to see you. I'm going to take these upstairs, baby. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you. So, how are you feeling, Dad? I'm getting by. It's been hard since your mom died, but I'm going through the motions. Yeah, I miss Mom, too. Grandpa put up a Christmas tree. What? What would Christmas be without a tree? <sighs> Can we decorate it? Can we? Do the hanging stuff, and I'll do the stringing stuff, okay? You're Santa Claus. All right. He goes right at the top of the tree, and... There's one more ornament, a very special one. Uh-uh. That's the last one. Look a little harder. Here it is. That's Pete. Who's Pete? You don't know who Pete is? Well, Dad, we were hoping that you would tell him the story. Mm-hmm. You're the Pete expert. <laughs> well, I can't tell the story of Santa and Pete without starting with Santa. He came first, you know. Do you know what he was called before the world knew him as Santa Claus? Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas was a Christian bishop who traveled the world performing small miracles, and people claimed he'd lived for hundreds of years. To look at St. Nick, you might think that God was about to call him home. The thin hair on his head no longer grew, and his beard was white and wild. But by all accounts, St. Nick was a gentle man, and the children loved him. Now, no matter where St. Nick was in his travels, he always returned home to Amsterdam to celebrate Christmas. And one year, he had to travel through Spain to get to Holland. And in those days, there was still a large Moorish population in Spain. And as uh, luck would have it, or as bad luck would have it, the Spanish government, who knew of his pilgrimages, singled him out for persecution. Persecution? What's that? Son, that's when one group of people don't like the beliefs of another group of people. I thought St. Nick was a good person. Well, he was, but you see, in those days, the Spaniards and Moors were not getting along. And some people resented his power and his message of peace and brotherhood, so the Spanish government arrested him as a spy. Spy? Of course he wasn't a spy, but I'll tell you this, things didn't look good for St. Nick on that cold day in December. What is this? It's called the Book of Life. What do you use it for? It's a list of important names that I check on every year, just about this time. book for a spy. Ha! <laughs> we both know I'm not a spy. It's evidence. Put it away. What do you have in here? Chocolate, games, toys, things of that nature. Tell me, do you have any children? Yes, I do. 
And I can assure you, they do not believe in St. Nicholas. choice traveling through Spain, old man. It looks like you will not be making it home for Christmas this year or any other year. Take him away. And so with Christmas only a few weeks away, St. Nick was as far from home as a person could be. Lucky for him, he was about to meet Pete. Thank you. Peter? How did you know my name? I know a lot of things about a lot of people. I know you have a big heart, for one thing. And I know you want to travel and see the world. You can read my mind? No. But I can read what's in your heart. You're St. Nicholas, aren't you? Mm-hmm. What, what are you doing in here? They think I'm a spy. <laughs> a spy? I'm not, of course. The only thing I carry with me wherever I go is a message of peace. Tell me something, St. Nicholas. You've been a lot of places, places I've only dreamed of. What's it like? It's everything you could imagine. <laughs> but I'll add this. Wherever I've been on my travels, I found that people are the same. They love, want to be loved. They, they want their life to amount to something. But they need help sometimes. That's where I come in. St. Nicholas. Mm hmm Will you tell me about your travels? There's a lot to tell. The two men wound up talking throughout the night. To look at them, you might have focused on their differences. One was black, the other white. One was a cook, the other a bishop. But Pete admired St. Nick's towering spirit. And St. Nick instinctively knew that Pete had much to offer the world with his generous heart and joyous nature. Just before daybreak, Pete made the most important decision of his life. Because you're St. Nicholas and the world needs you. Now, come on. You're taking a terrible risk. Don't worry about that. Come on. Peter. 
Pika, would you like to come with me? I could use a partner. Me? I'm just a cook. Oh, you're much more than that. But if you can't, I understand. Look, Nick, you've got to get out of here right now. I had a book, leather bound, very old. I can't leave without it. Why is it so important to you? It's just a book. Oh, it's infinitely more than that. All right, look, I'll go get it and you stay right here, okay? I'll be back. passed down by hundreds of years until it became legend. What's so important about the Book of Life anyway? Well, only God and Saint Nick knew for sure. You see, the Book of Life is filled with secrets. Secrets? Mm -hmm. About people's lives, past, present, and future. And if anybody else ever looked inside, they wouldn't remember a thing they saw once the book was closed. Like magic. You might say that. You know what else was magic? Santa and Pete. Before Pete knew it, they'd been partners for years. Now, I think that we should plan things out a little better. Well, I, I prefer to go on instinct myself. I can see that. Well, it served me pretty well so far. I still think we need an itinerary, some sort of detailed plan for our journey. Life is the journey, and God plans the itinerary. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. What? That I'm too set in my ways. That's exactly what I... You do that a lot, you know that? What? You always tell me what you think I'm thinking. I can't help it. I've got a knack for it. How else do you think I know the difference between who's been naughty or who's been nice? Well, it's an annoying knack, Nick. But I do know what you're thinking most of the time. Well, even if you do, you don't always have to say it. Maybe, just maybe, I don't want to know what I'm thinking. All right, I'll try not to tell you what you're thinking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. This will tide you over till we get to the next town. You're hungry, aren't you? How'd you know? I know what you're thinking sometimes, too, Nick. Uh-huh, watch out. <laughs> what is it? Dried fruit. Dried fruit. It's good for you. Looks dead. Oh, I got some fruit cake too. I, I baked a loaf a few days ago. <laughs> Dried fruit or fruit cake. Suddenly, I'm not hungry anymore. Huh? More for me. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Mmm. Let's go. No matter what Santa and Pete's differences were, they were united on one thing, the children. The children were always first in their hearts. 
And sure enough, as time passed, the children grew to love Pete as much as they did St. Nick. One year, when St. Nick and Pete returned to Holland for their annual Christmas visit, they discovered that many of the children were missing. Missing? Well, they had gone to the New World with their families. Where's the New World? The New World is here, son. America. That's right. And St. Nick and Pete knew they had to follow the children to this land of new beginnings and endless dreams. Believe it. We're actually going to the new world. Well, believe it. Even the name sounds exciting. The new world. Ooh, man. What do you think it's gonna be like when we get there? Like the old one. Only newer. <laughs> right, right, right. Wow. Santa and Pete. I I heard you were going to the new world. We sure are. Word travels fast. Oh, I was hoping you might find someone for me. Her name's Elizabeth Van Olden. Please, please give her this ring and tell her I love her and I will join her as soon as possible. I want to marry her. Well, we got a lot to do when we get there, and how Peter, are we gonna... Peter, we're never too busy to help someone find their true love. Excuse me. There are gonna be a lot of people in the new world. It could be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Hmm? What's your name, young man? Henry. Henry Rutgers. Well, Henry, I promise you, we'll do our best to try and find her. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. you you're my only hope. Have a good trip. Good day, Henry. Oh, good day to you. Nick, you just told this man we'll find the woman he loves. We could end up breaking his heart. Have faith, Peter. We will find Miss Elizabeth Van Olden, and we'll still have time to spend Christmas with the children. Now, we have a ship to catch. The New World. <laughs> Close your eyes, Dad. Put out your hands. And take a deep breath. Mince meat pie. <laughs> your grandma Ruth's favorite. Nobody made mince meat pie like your grandmother, Terrence. And she always made it every Christmas. Thank you, Cassie. You're welcome. Mm. I wish grandma were here. You know what, sweetie? In a way, she is. And she's all around us. Did Grandma like the Santa and Pete story? She loved it. And guess what? We're now coming to her favorite part. Which part? Where they come to the new world. It was a long, hard voyage across the Atlantic for Santa and Pete. On December 23rd, they set foot on the soil that today is New York City. Look around you, Peter. Whee! We're here! Ha, the new world. My heart's thumping like a jackrabbit. You know what we gotta do, Nick? No, what? Just this once. Let's splurge. Let's get the biggest room in New Amsterdam. Peter, I'm surprised at you. I know I'm usually the one with the tight purse strings, but I mean, we have to do something to celebrate. Wow. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Wait a minute. Isn't that your coat? Where? Oh, yes, it is. Why is she wearing it? I gave it to her. You gave it to her? Why? I grew fond of her and her children coming over on the voyage. I didn't want them to be cold. Ah, oh, Nick, I can't believe you. You know, you got to think of yourself sometimes. You know, you're getting on in years, and you could catch a death of a cold in this weather. Peter, will you stop worrying about me? I'm as warm as toast. 
I want to get this ring to Miss Van Olden. She's here? No. But the Reverend usually knows everything that goes on in town. Santa and Pete? Oh, I don't believe this. It really is you. I, I heard the rumors that you might be coming to New Amsterdam, and I can't believe it. Here you are. <laughs> oh, my name is Maria Dangola. Pleased to meet you, Maria. What on earth would bring you to New Amsterdam? Uh, mainly, we're here to see the children. That, and to ensure that the tradition of gift-giving is carried on here in the New World. Oh, well, my children are going to be so jealous when they hear that I met you. Well, perhaps we'll see them tomorrow night when we do our rounds. Oh, they would love that. Uh, by the way, would you care to join us for our Christmas Eve feast? That sounds absolutely wonderful. wonderful. That's, that sounds wonderful, but uh, uh, we can't. See, that's the busiest night of the year for us. Oh, Anderson. Maria. Janet, Janet, come here. Look who it is, Santa and Pete. This is my sister, Janet. I was just inviting them to dinner tomorrow night. Have you accepted the invitation? What time would you like us? Say, 6 o'clock? We'll be there. Wonderful. We live on the outskirts of town in a place called Harlem. Just ask for the Dangola family. Thank you, Maria. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. This is so exciting. I can't wait to tell the children. What? What? I thought we were too busy. Well, I mean, I, I thought, you know, I mean, you didn't like the fruitcake, so I figured you wouldn't turn down a free meal and... I'm sure that's the only reason you wanted to go. <laughs> no, no! How did you get in here? Those are decorations for the Christmas program. You can't eat those. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, are you two here for the Christmas program? Uh, out, out. Oh, uh, we have everyone we need for the nativity, but uh, Santa and Pete. Well, that's a wonderful idea. The children would love that. Oh, <laughs> actually, Reverend. And and you'd make a wonderful Santa. You're a dead ringer for him. What about me? Well. You're a passable Pete, but Santa here. Passable? <laughs> I am Pete. You're not saying? Exactly. Oh, my. Hello, Reverend Bogart. Santa and Pete. What an honor that you would come to our colony. Oh, and your timing is perfect. The children could use a little inspiration right now. Oh? Why is that? Oh, well, it just doesn't feel much like Christmas this year. Uh, it, life is so hectic here with all the faiths and cultures and so many people and more arriving every day. Families have been separated and not found each other. Why, that's terrible. And then there's the unrest between the settlers and the Indians. The Indians? Yeah, there have been attacks on both sides, mostly over land. I heard yesterday the governor was planning an attack in retaliation for something. I'm... I can't believe this. <laughs> The new world's already sounding like the old one. We were led to believe that we were coming to a land of peace and harmony. Well, that was the dream, St. Nicholas. And I guess you noticed how commercial everything's become. Commercial? Well, the establishments put up the Christmas decorations a week ago. That is getting a jump on things, isn't it? Uh, excuse me, Reverend. Uh, Peter, can I have the ring? I don't have the ring. Miss Van Olden's. I gave it to you. No, I put it in your bag. No, I remember. On board the ship... No, we were on a I, ship, and I gave it to you because I wouldn't be responsible for it. I told Peter, you. I, th well, this is that, so You may have told me, but that's not... This is... Just uh, keep uh, looking uh, for uh, it. Uh, 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 uh. I'm sorry. Uh, we were asked to deliver this ring to an Elizabeth Van Olden. 
She wouldn't happen to be a member of your congregation, would she? Yes. Yes, she is. Ah. Do you know where she lives? Uh, no. Uh, I believe she works at the tannery here in town, though. Thank you, Reverend. And a happy holiday to you. Oh, and to both of you as well. It, it, it was wonderful to see you. Go, 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 go. Reverend, there's still time for the dream of a better way of life to become a reality. Oh, I pray for that every day, St. Nicholas. Too busy to celebrate Christmas. Trouble between the settlers and the Indians. Maybe we were meant to be here. We got a lot of work to do, Peter. Ah, but first we got to find us a place to stay. Not before we find Miss Van Olden. Love is patient, but it shouldn't be kept waiting too long. like everyone else in town. <laughs> Waiting to the last minute, and then I want my boots repaired now. Actually, sir, we're here on other business. Uh, we understand you have someone named Elizabeth Van Olden working here. Not anymore. Didn't like working with hides. <laughs> and they made her squeamish. I don't blame her. Do you happen to know where she lives? I do not. This town's grown so fast, it's hard to keep track of anyone. So I see. By the way, if you two are who I think you are, why did you leave some coal in my children's shoes? <laughs> they haven't been too good since they came to New Amsterdam. You want me to put coal in your children's shoes? Yeah, that's what you do, isn't it? No, that's not what I do. I don't know where that rumor got started, but I did not put coal in children's shoes. And do you know why? Because every child is basically good. They need to be encouraged, not told how bad they've been. So when you go home tonight from a long day's work and they're getting on your nerves, try giving them the biggest hug ever and tell them that you love them. You do that, and I guarantee you, you and your children will be just fine. Maybe I'll try that. Wonderful. Well, it was nice to meet you. I'm glad we had this chance to chat. And uh, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you, too. Nicely done, Peter. Uh, I've learned from the best. Now, let's go book that room. Oh, I can't wait. Come on. A warm bath, a feather bed. After two months on that ship, it's going to be paradise. Nothing. Nothing? I told him we'd been every place in town. I asked him to double check his ledger. I cajoled. I pleaded. I even told him I was traveling with the famous St. Nick. What did he say to that? <sighs> no room at the end. <laughs> Sounds familiar. But he did mention this other place outside of town, but I wasn't sure. It, we'll it's... take it. Well, hardly the best room in town, is it? That's not even the best barn in town. I knew we should have let me bargain for this place. I'm too tired to bargain. Besides which, that man may have needed money more than we did. Oh, I doubt it. Give freely, Peter, and you will enjoy abundance. Trust me. You know, I think it's rather cozy in here. If you don't mind a room with a view. It's better than our accommodation coming over on the ship. I can't argue with that. So, here we are. Tell me, Peter, what are your first impressions of this new world? A little overwhelming. I, I wasn't expecting so many people. But frankly, I'm concerned that we're not going to have enough gifts for the children. 
I think we're going to have just the right amount. Let me ask you something, Nick. Why is it you're so positive about everything? That's simple, Peter. Being negative is no fun. <laughs> what was that? What? Okay. We're not gonna hurt you. Come on out. Come on. Pete? Yes. What's going on? Santa and Pete! Obviously, you know our names, young lady. I think it's only fair that we should know yours. Marlene. Marlene. That's a pretty name. Where are your parents, Marlene? I don't know. Did you get lost? No, I just fell asleep. Fell asleep? In the woods where we were building our cabin. My mother and father said it was okay for me to lie down under a tree. When I woke up, I couldn't find them. I don't like it here. I want to go back to Holland. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. You'll feel better when we find your parents. Can you? Can you really find them? We will. Now, that's a promise. Thank you, Santa. Good night, Marlene. Good night, Santa. I'm gonna need a ledger to keep track of all these promises you keep handing out. First you tell Henry Ruckers we'll deliver his ring, then you tell Marlene we'll find her parents. How do you plan we'll do all of this? Don't worry, Peter. We'll find Marlene's parents safe and sound. What, what do you suppose happened to them? They could have got lost. You heard what the Reverend said. People become separated and then can never find one another again. Do you think the Indians might have anything to do with this? I don't know. But I suspect the governor knows. So tomorrow we find Marlene's parents, uh, visit all the children, pass out all their gifts, go to the governor. Don't forget Miss Van Olden. I suggest finding Miss Van Olden is a low priority, Nick. Miss Van Olden is very important, Peter. Very important. Why? I don't... <sighs> Wait a second. You looked in the Book of Life, didn't you? Come on, Nick, level with me. Did you see their names in there together? Did Henry Rutgers marry Elizabeth Van Olden? Is it faith that we're, we're to deliver this ring to her? The book of life is not written in stone, Peter. That's the great beauty of it. Everybody writes their own story.
what we have here. Huh? Look at that. Nick, you can ride more comfortably in the new world. In this? It's nothing but a piece of junk. Oh, no, no, no. One man's junk is another man's treasure. We can fix it up. I prefer riding my horse. It's become a tradition. Well, maybe it's time for a change. Hmm? I like tradition. Your chariot awaits you, my lady. I'm hungry. Oh, wait a minute. I got something that'll tide you over to breakfast. What is it? Dried fruit. A Pete special. No, thanks. Fine. Be that way. What? You mean you're not even going to offer her the fruitcake? No, I'm not what? even going to mention the fruitcake. <laughs> oh, fine. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> we men of vision are used to being ridiculed. Yeah! Yeah! Get up! to see the governor, please. It's important. I'm sorry, the governor is having his breakfast. Oh. I'm the governor. Good morning, sir. Would you like a cup of cocoa? Go ahead. What can I do for you? We understand that there's considerable tension between the settlers and the Indians. Well, it's not exactly a secret. What did you do, just get off the boat? <laughs> well, actually, we did. There's even a rumor to the effect that you're planning an attack. Even if I were considering such a thing, I wouldn't tell you. Who do you think you are, anyway? My name is Nicholas. This is my partner, Peter. And the little girl is Marlene, daughter of two of the settlers who seem to have disappeared. Do you think the Indians might have anything to do with this? Yes, I'm sure of it. All the more reason for a retaliation. Well, I'd like to propose that Peter and I go to the Indians, talk to them, see if we can find a peaceful solution to the problem. <laughs> for one thing, you'd have to find them first. They're always moving from one place to another. And if you did find them, we'd never hear from you again. And why is that? These Indians are savages, not to be reasoned with or trusted. There's some good in every man, Governor. May I suggest that you reconsider your thinking, or at least postpone action until after the holidays? I'm the leader of this colony, and I will do what I think is appropriate. <coughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm in the middle of my breakfast. Do think about it, Governor. Thank you for the cocoa. You're very welcome. Is the Governor a nice man? Well, uh, uh, the word nice doesn't do him justice. Well, does he know where my parents are? Not exactly, but he did give us a good idea where to look. I remember you said you were hungry. Me too. Let's go have some breakfast. Everything always looks brighter on a full stomach. One thing, Nick, but you're gonna put on 200 pounds in one day if you're not careful. 
I don't think I have much to be scared of there. <laughs> Excuse me, man. What are you doing? Going back for thirds? <laughs> Can I take these carrots to feed the horses? Yes, I think they would like that very much. What on earth? I traded a few chocolates and my old hat for it. You know, everybody here is in love with chocolate. And there's none to be had. Well, it looks like you got the short end of the stick on that deal. You don't like it? It's just, uh, it's, it's different. Different, yeah. Yeah, it's new worldish. Santa and Pete, the horses are gone. See? Look, there's a note. Dear sir, we have borrowed your horses for the soldiers. This pack animal is a temporary replacement. Sign the governor. They took our horses? Don't worry, Nick. We're going to get them back. But my horse has been with me every Christmas since I can remember. I know, but this is the new world. We can start some new traditions. Besides, look at this face. Isn't this a face you could learn to love? I like her. So do I. So, uh, what do you think about little reindeer now? <laughs> I still prefer my horse. <laughs> How would you like to put this around our reindeer's neck? What are you writing those messages anyway? It differs from child to child. I want each and every one of them to feel that God knows them individually. And that the child, too, might grow from knowing God. That's right, Peter. <laughs> Come over here. I want to put the spell on you. Come on. You're worried about Marlene's parents, aren't you? I'm concerned for everyone involved. Peter, I believe in my heart of hearts that Marlene's parents have not been harmed. And I think I know how to find them. Tonight, after we've had dinner with the Dangolas. After we've had dinner. We ride out into the forest. We ride into the forest. And let the Indians find us. <laughs> and let the Indians find us? Wait a minute. What? That, that, that's crazy. No. I think it'll work. Okay, I'm willing to try it if you are. But you know, with everything going on around here, giving out chocolates and the toys to the children seems almost incidental. Peter, I've seen a lot through my life. Wars, famine, people's dreams being dashed for one reason or another. And through it all, I've given thanks that I was the patron saint of children. They are the ray of hope through our darkness. That's why we celebrate them on Christmas Eve. After all, Christmas started with a child, didn't it? Yes, it did. And you know what? We'll get everything done if we have to work all night 
we'll deliver the presents to the children. That's it? That's it? That's the idea? What? Well, we'll deliver the gifts to the children at night while they're sleeping. Would be more of a surprise in the morning, wouldn't it? And more efficient. Peter? I think you're onto something here. It's easy to think when you don't have a dead raccoon sitting on your head. Ah. Let me give you an idea how long ago this story took place. When St. Nick and Pete first came here, this whole neighborhood was nothing but a big field. And right in the middle, two windmills. Broadway was a dirt road. Harlem was a small village. Indian trails ran hither and yon. It was really an exciting time, actually. Of course, it was a hard time, too. People didn't have what we have today in, in the material sense, and, and children didn't get as many presents. But you see, it didn't really matter. The spirit of Christmas, that's what really mattered. And it was that spirit that Santa and Pete carried with them on the first Christmas Eve in the New World. We don't have much. Give freely, Peter. I know, I know, and enjoy abundance. Exactly. I can't believe I'm with Santa and Pete on Christmas Eve. Well, you better start, Marlene, because believing's what Christmas is all about. Well, would you look at that? Seems our dear is quite a vixen. You, you know, that's that's a good name for her. What's a vixen? Yes. Um, I think I'm going to let Peter explain that to you. Me? Wait a second. You said that you would tell it. <laughs> uh, let's see. A, uh, a vixen is a lady who is very popular with the gentleman. They don't have it. And they should all have one. Hey, okay, Marlene, why don't you start? Okay. That one in the front, the big one. Comet. That's a great name. How'd you come up with that one, Marlene? Well, my father and I saw a comet the first night we were in New Amsterdam. He said it was good luck. Comet it is. Your turn. Dasher. For, for that, that fast one there. I like that. Uh, he looks like a racehorse, you know, dashing for the finish line. One more. OK, it's my turn. Um, I'll name the last reindeer Cupid. Cupid? Why Cupid? Because I believe in the unifying power of love. Mm -hmm. On Dasher. On Cupid. On Comet. And Vixen. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Peace. And our children, Little Manuel and Julia. It's very nice to meet you all. Oh, and this is Marlene. Hello. Well, hello, Marlene. Welcome to our house. Everyone, please make yourself at home. I thought the real Santa and Pete had a big bag with gifts in it. Julia! <laughs> right, you are, Julia. I'll be right back.
Do you think the horses could use a drink of water? Actually, it's reindeer now, Jonathan. Reindeer? Yes, reindeer. And I'm sure they'd love a drink of water. I think Janet is especially pleased that you and Pete came to New Amsterdam. <laughs> Could use a little. Oh, let, let me get that for you. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a nice night. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> so, Janet, um, how long have you been here in the world? About a year. Why did you come? Things weren't going very well for me back in Holland. I decided I needed a new start. And did you get a new start? Yes. Yes, I have. It's not perfect here, but <laughs> it is exciting. <laughs> oh, I think this new world is full of great possibilities. Oh, you might be right. <laughs> you see, I have all these dreams. Such as? I want to be a teacher. Oh, I think that's a wonderful dream to have. You do? Yes, yes I do. And like Nick always says, the children are our future. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how long will you be here in New Amsterdam? Uh, well, Nick wants to get home pretty soon. But you've just arrived. I know. Do you want to leave so soon? I pretty much go wherever Nick goes. Tell me, what's it like traveling with the famous Saint Nick? Oh, it's wonderful. It's demanding and inspiring. Because of him, I know that dreams can come true. Get back inside. We don't want to keep the children waiting. <laughs> gotta had a bag. I gotta get a bag. The bag. Let's get the bag. Um, this is for Julia. There's something else in there, Julia. See what it is. What is it? I see it's something, Mama. Let's see. To some they are rags, to you a doll. If you miss Lizzie, look behind the mill wall. Walk in faith. Let's go see. Come on. How did you know that Julia had a doll named Lizzie, Santa? Nick knows a lot of things about a lot of people. And this is for you, little Manuel. <laughs> Mama, Mama, Santa was right. Lizzie was behind the mill wall. <laughs> All right, children, you can stay up a little longer, and then it's bedtime. Oh, can Marlene stay with us until her parents come back? Would you like to stay with us, Marlene? We sure would love to have you. I think that would be wonderful. It's <laughs> 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 bigger and bigger. <laughs> How'd you work it? Go ahead. Almost. <laughs> I love sugar cookies. This is great.
You've made this evening so special, St. Nick. Thank you. There's one more thing I might do for you, Maria. I know you're concerned about your baby. Well, yes. We lost the last one. And this one is... Three weeks late. This is for your baby. Daniel Paul Dangola. That's the name we chose. If it's a boy, he'll grow up to be a strong, healthy young man. Where's the bag? The bag. The bag. You're driving. I know. Thank you for a wonderful evening and a Merry Christmas to all. And to you, a good night. Christmas to all, and to all a good night. I like the sound of that. the man with the white beard. We have waited a long time for your return. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but I think you may have mistaken me for someone else. Come. Join us. Your legend has been passed down through several generations. A man with a white beard came to the Indians. It was a good time for our people. Crops were plentiful. There was peace between all the tribes. There must be a reason that you have returned. Actually, there is. We have heard that you may have taken a couple of the settlers, a man and a woman. 
These two have a daughter who misses them very much. This is Christmas Eve. She could receive no more wonderful present than to be reunited with her parents. You bring a message of peace. I do, for the sake of all our children. You have delivered the same message to the settlers? I promise you this. I personally will deliver this message to the governor of New Amsterdam. It is good that you have come. I'm glad that we did. And now, before we leave, these are for the children. We also have a gift for you. This is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It took two full moons to find the reddest of berries to dye this coat. This is perfect. <laughs> In honor of this occasion, I will wear this coat every Christmas Eve. The Indians know about a man with the white beard? They had a prophecy that such a man would come to them flying through the air. You know, Dad, what I always loved about this story is that it has the mix of all cultures. That's why I love telling it. And this is a Dutch legend? Yes, it is. And it takes into account the fact that people throughout the ages have failed to bridge the gap between all the different cultures. And that's why Santa and Peter are so important. Yes. Love, forgiveness, friendship, and a playful sense of humor. Those are the real gifts that Santa and Pete brought to the new world. They had faith that they could make a difference. Grandpa, what's faith? Well, it's that thing inside that you hold on to until help arrives. I knew that would work out. As soon as we got there, I thought, no problem. Except we still don't have Marlene's parents. We've done all we can do for now. You can't force the Indians or the governor to do something they don't really want to do. Yeah! Yeah! What on earth got into these reindeer? I don't know. It's like they're possessed or something. Janet! Is this the bucket you use for those reindeer? Yes. Why? Oh, my. That's not the one with Maria's special Christmas concoction in it. I'm afraid so. Oh, her secret African recipe? The one with the big cake. <laughs> well, I know what it does to humans. But what does it do to reindeer? <laughs> I can't. You just don't want me to get my hat back. No, it's not that. I really can't stop these animals. Whatever's happened to this team, they certainly got the spirit. You look at this. Someone's left gifts for us. Oh, this must be where the man from the tannery lives. How very kind of him. Not only kind, but well needed, Nick. You could use a change, you know? You've been wearing the same style clothes for about, what, 400 years now? <laughs> oh, you're a great one to talk. 
It's a good thing the Indians gave you that jerkin. <laughs> hey, I have my own sense of style. My wardrobe will never go out of fashion. I'm going to have a whole new look. Stop, governor's house. It was a good night, Peter. Oh, this bag is as heavy as it was when we started. Uh huh. I sure didn't think we'd have enough presents. Uh huh. Where are the shoes? Oh, the children are gonna be disappointed in the morning. No, we we've got to get in. It's important. They must be afraid of the Indians. But if you want to get inside, all you got to do is knock. I don't want to wake them. But what do you suppose we do? Go down the chimney? to work on your entrance, Nick. <coughs> Where's my bag? <gasps> Santa and Pete? Shh. Uh, look, I can explain everything. You see, the shoes were supposed to be outside, and they weren't. So he looked up, and then the chimney. It, could you just get us the children's wooden shoes, please? Oh, the children stopped wearing their wooden shoes when they came to New Amsterdam. No wooden shoes. How about stockings? Stockings? Looks kind of funny to me. No, it doesn't. I have to think about this one. You can think about it all you want. Trust me, this, this one's a keeper. I thought you might be hungry. How about some cookies and milk? Oh, that's so nice of you. Now you mention it, I, I am hungry. <laughs> I'd like you to have this too, Santa. I, I must admit, I made it for someone else, but it does not look like he will be coming to New Amsterdam. I hope you like it. You say you made it for someone else? Y yes. What is your name? Elizabeth. Van Holden? Yes. This is for you. Ooh. Henry Rutgers asked us to deliver it to you. He loves you very much. 
He'll join you here just as soon as it's possible. He wants to marry you, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, Santa. Thank you so much. Oh. Um, please, uh, keep the hat. Well, thank you. It definitely goes better with the coat, Nick. Quite smashing. It is you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone so happy, Nick? I think it's the best Christmas present we've ever delivered. Okay, so now you can tell me. Did Henry Ruckers and Elizabeth Van Olden marry in the Book of Life? They do now. Last stop of the night on the first Christmas Eve in the New World was Santa and Pete. What about Marlene? Well, I didn't see that was the end of the story. <laughs> Remember the promise that Santa made to the Indians? Well, before he left the governor's house, he wrote him a letter. He explained how he had visited with the Indians and how he felt there could be peace between them and the settlers. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That was Santa's Christmas message. Let me ask you something. If I were to look in the Book of Life and find my name, would I remember what I'd seen? No, you wouldn't. But I'll tell you this. If when I get on the boat this week to sail back to Holland, you're not with me. I'll understand. Oh, <laughs> I call that jumping to conclusions. I only met Janet tonight. So you were thinking about her? Of course I was. She's a wonderful woman. I I've never met anyone like her. So stick around for a while. See what happens. What, are you trying to get rid of me? Don't tell me you haven't been thinking about settling down. You'd make a wonderful husband. And, and father. I've never seen anybody who is better with children. And remember, Peter, there's no higher calling than being a parent. What about you? When are you going to get married and settle down? Me? Married? <laughs> can you picture that? Absolutely. I can. Mrs. St. Nick. <laughs> I'm on the road too much to marry. Well, you can't be on the road forever. And besides, you talked about cutting back on travel. That's true. Perhaps if I were to meet... Mrs. Wright, I'd settle down and move up north. Hey, wait a second. Did you ever look your name up in the Book of Life? My name's not in there. It's not? The one name that's a complete mystery to me is my own. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Marlene's parents? see on Christmas Eve is a sad little girl. 
said you'd find them, Santa. You promised. I did indeed. Go to the window. Look outside. Looks like Vixen's got more company, Nick. Five, six. I draw the line at eight. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Even with six reindeer, there's no way you're going anywhere in that carriage tonight. I'm afraid she's right, Nick. With all this snow, I think we're stuck. You can stay with us. We really must be on our way tonight, Maria. I might be able to help you out. I'm known as quite a handyman in these parts. Magician Manuel. <laughs> no, that would be you, Santa. I'm just good at fixing things. Can't you stay a little while, Santa? Time for me to go home, Maria. What about Pete? I can't speak for him. Yes. So you just came back to check on Marlene? Not just that. I also wanted to tell you that We'll be back again next year. I sense that I still have important work to do with Nick. And I sense that you have important work to do. Do you really? Absolutely. And I think you'll make a wonderful teacher. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'll see you next year. Yes, you will. Oh, you did a great job, Big Manuel. 
Only the best for Santa and Pete. <laughs> oh, by the way, how did the reindeer behave this evening? Uh, they were a little rambunctious. <laughs> <laughs> Just be sure to keep tight hold on the reins. Believe me, I will. I do believe this is the best Christmas I've ever had. Oh, it certainly has been for us too, Santa. Take care of yourselves. You sure this is what you want? I don't have a choice. Besides, if I'm meant to have a family and settle down, I believe it will happen. I believe it will too, Peter. And by the way, why did Big Manuel ask about the reindeer? I wonder. Yeah! Yeah! Dad, it gets better every time you tell it. My favorite part is when they go flying off in the end. Oh, you know, my favorite part was when Big Manuel tells the kids it's time to go to bed. Oh, Dad, can I stay up just a little longer, please? Afraid not, son. Besides, Sand and Pete could be here at any moment. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. How are they going to know I'm here? Mm, Santa knows a lot of things, but a lot of people remember. Come on, son. Let's go. Good night, Grandpa. I'll be up in a little bit, sweetie. You know what, Ted? I remember the first time I heard that story. I was just as excited as Terrence. You were? Mm-hmm. You know what else? I remember how special Christmas was in this house. And all the decorations and the smells. All the love. I'm glad the spirit of Christmas is back in this house. Your mama would be pleased. What's going on, Terrence? You have to see this! See what? Where'd it go? Where'd what go? It was right here!
What was right here? I saw the Book of Life. It was right there. I'm serious. I found my name and mom and dad's and yours. And when I traced all the names back to the beginning, that's funny. I can't remember. You really got into that story, didn't you, Terrence? I saw it, Grandpa. You know, I believe that there's one person in every generation who's the keeper of the family history. And it's his honor and his responsibility to pass it on. Do you think that someone might be me? Yes, I do. Dad? Is everything all right? Everything's just fine. There's an old African belief that as long as there is someone alive to call your name, you never die. We count Pete among our ancestors, and we call out his name every Christmas. In this way, he and Santa continue to share their message of peace and joy, family and faith to anyone who will listen. Bob Nasher. On Cupid. On Connie.